Give us a little sense of what you're seeing and hearing right now and what these last five days have been like. Yes, well, um, I'm not in Kiev at the moment. I'm in the Western Ukraine in a location that I don't want to disclose due to security concerns. And actually what we are seeing here in the Western Ukraine is a massive influx of internally displaced people who are living, you know, the areas where the military action is currently taking place. And uh, in my house, we're also hosting uh, um, six uh, internally displaced people. Some more uh, have to arrive in, uh, today. Uh, so uh, massive effort, you know, to, to help evacuate civilians and to help them when they when they evacuate also refugees on the border but at the same time uh, heavy fighting is going on in uh, central and in southern and east, in in eastern ukraine around kharkiv around kiev kharkiv was targeted today uh, by uh, a russian artillery uh, for the first time uh, civilian uh, houses were targeted on such a massive scale ukrainian government reports there are uh, dozens at least dozens of casualties we don't know the exact number now and also military special they say that uh, cluster munitions were used by Russia to cause uh, a massive, uh, you know, civilian uh, loss of life. And that was happening as uh, Ukrainian and Russian delegation were meeting uh, somewhere at Ukraine-Belarus border, you know. So Russia is escalating, is clearly escalating the stakes. It's showing that it's ready to uh, go, you know, uh, after civilian population to indiscriminately shell and kill Ukrainian civilian population. So uh, the situation is really very dire. And it's very dire for civilians who are not able to uh, leave uh, the cities that are currently under shelling. There are limited options of them to move on the road. The, the roads, there is a traffic, the roads are clogged, there are not enough trains. Uh, so the situation is pretty dire on the ground. Understanding that, is there anything that you see additionally that can be done by NATO, that can be done by Western countries, can be done by the United States to, to help what we've known all along was likely going to be a refugee situation that uh, could approach well into the millions? Well, you know, assistance, additional assistance should be provided to Ukraine. We are already facing food shortages in some areas in Kharkiv region. Also in Kyiv, in the capital, millions of people, you know, live there, could be affected by this. There are also fuel shortages. So uh, some, I don't know how it could be implemented, but it's like some kind of a corridor should be established to provide, you know, uh, food and and fuel and necessary also medicines to those areas affected. The Ukrainian hospitals are struggling with the influx of uh, injured people, and there is a you know massive effort inside Ukraine of people from different parts of the country not affected by the uh, by the war action to to send uh, medicines to those parts that are affected. But it is not enough. We also need supplies from abroad. We need an international humanitarian effort, and at the same time, more uh, you know pressure should be put on Russia in order to stop this indiscriminate killings of the civilian populations. Uh, uh, the sanctions are, are, are great. You know, what has been applied so far is really uh, very impressive. We appreciate that in Ukraine, but there are still other options to explore, such as you know, sanctioning Russian energy and uh, and gas sector in order to stop to, to, to you know, cut access uh, to funds to, to continue this war.